good morning and uh, thanks for inviting us all to be here um, actually there's a whole there's a bunch of our family members here my uh, uh, sister-in-law Nancy Cooper um, who is Janet's wife and her beautiful uh, twin boys uh, Quinn and Jay and also my uh, my brother uh, Hugh Smiley um, I also just before I, I, I say a little bit about uh, uh, my very impressive sister I want to acknowledge um, that we're on the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples, um, and as well that we're on the uh, treaty territories of Mississaugas um, of the Credit First Nation. And also to um, uh, acknowledge that uh, one of the closest First Nation communities not that far north um, from here is the Chippewas of Georgina Island. And, uh, and that uh, as evidenced by uh, our family that we're, you know, we're indigenous people um, from all nations, um, Turtle Island are, are, uh, are found in all parts of uh, still many territories. Um, so um, I'm honored and so very proud to be able to introduce uh, my sister today and to support her recognition um, at KCSS in this um, class of distinction. Um, and I can't think of a better role model for young students who are academically inclined and want to share their gifts in ways that will make a difference in the world. Janet has always excelled as a student. I think she was the valedictorian. I couldn't actually uh, remember, but she definitely, if not, she had the highest average or something in her graduating class. We kind of got used to her doing well in all kinds of things and stopped remembering <laughs> all the details of it. Um, uh, she could have really had a, um, a career in almost any discipline. I think uh, she initially um, headed off to, after graduating here, she headed off to McGill University um, to do an undergrad in, in biochemistry. Um, she, she has dedicated her working and personal life to working alongside many Indigenous uh, people and communities and uh, really with a goal of improving health outcome, Indigenous health outcomes. Um, so I'm going to take a few minutes to actually read her very impressive uh, work bio, and uh, it's it's you know it's a good thing actually as a family member to do this because I I'm still in uh, in awe of of her and the work that she's done. Uh, so Dr. Smiley is a respected international leader in the field of Indigenous health, one of Canada's first Métis physicians. Her 25-year career has focused on addressing inequities in the health of Indigenous peoples in Canada by bridging gaps in health knowledge and practice. Trained in medicine at Queen's University, the University of Ottawa, and the University of Toronto, Dr. Smiley has practiced and taught family medicine in diverse Indigenous communities, urban, rural, and remote. She has extra training in women's health and mental health and therapy. She's also completed a Master of Public Health at John Hopkins University. She currently holds a Canadian Institute of Health Research Applied Public Health Research Chair in Indigenous Health Knowledge and Information at St. Michael's Hospital, where she directs the Well Living House Action Research Centre for Indigenous Infant, Child and Family Health and Wellbeing, and is also an active staff physician. Her primary academic appointment is at the University of Toronto, the Dalalana School of Public Health, with a cross appointment to Family and Community Medicine. She continues uh, part-time clinical work as a, consult a consulting family physician at Seventh Generation Midwives in Toronto. Um, her foundational contributions in, in Indigenous health have included the development of guidelines for health professionals working with Indigenous peoples, improving population-based Indigenous health assessment and response, particularly for infants and children, and Indigenizing knowledge translation theory and practice. Recent innovations have included the application of respondent-driven sampling to produce previously unavailable population-based health needs and assessment data for urban Indigenous populations in Canada. And uh, just a, a note that um, in much of that work, she's, she's been able to demonstrate that um, Indigenous urban populations are, to, are, are looks like probably typically two to four times more than, than would be represented in um, StatsCan um, data. Um, identification of best practices in Indigenous maternal, infant, and child health, and the development and testing of new approaches to address uh, racism among health professionals and health services uh, who are serving Indigenous health peoples. 
Um, her aims in all aspects of her work to meet the dual criteria of scientific excellence and indigenous community relevance. Um, she's acquired over $10 million of peer reviewed funding as a principal investigator, and in fact, 6.5 million over the last four years. Um, and has a current applied health research partnership agreements with more than 20 indigenous organizations and communities. Um, she's published over 100 peer-reviewed publications and more in more than 50 of those was she the, she was the first author. <laughs> Is she turning red? Oh, back there, good, so it's good. <laughs> On the topic of indigenous health and has one of the highest index factors in this field. Her, her recent um, discussion paper called First Nations Peoples, Second Class Treatment, The Role of Racism in the Health and Well-Being of Indigenous Pe Peoples was featured on CBC's The National and downloaded more than 4,500 times in the week of its release. And in the past five years, she's presented over 75 times as an invited speaker regionally, nationally, and internationally to diverse audience. So <laughs> She currently sits on the National Statistics Council of Canada, where she has advised Canada's uh, chief statistician. Additionally, she's presented to parliamentary roundtables and subcommittees and at two provincial and territorial inquests as an expert witness. Um, tangible Indigenous community impacts of her work include contributing to the development of the Toronto Birth Centre, which incorporates indig Indigenous knowledge and practice into its day-to-day -day operations. Substantive funding increases at Des Denae Health Access Center, that's just um, in, the Ham in Hamilton, um, based on the data that came out of um, our health counts, which was the data, uh, the, the, the initiative that I, I spoke about before. Um, and also um, pre the preservation and application of indigenous oral history knowledge and in the area of reproductive child and family health. Um, she has recruited a world-class cadre of Indigenous health researchers, um, uh, seconded health practitioners, students, and staff to St. Michael's Hospital and de developed a highly productive Indigenous health um, research unit at well, well Living House, which is uniquely co-governed by a council of Indigenous grandparents and, and the hospital. And she's formally supervised over 50 trainees, including medical students, residents, graduate students, and postdoctoral fellows, many of whom are now leaders in Indigenous health research, education, and practice and policy. So, and <laughs> we're almost finished, but there, there's, all of these are, are definitely worthy of mentioning. I was trying to think, what could you, how would you uh, kind of uh, make this more concise, but it's all really important. Uh, Dr. Smiley's outstanding accomplishments were recognized in 2012 with the National Aboriginal Achievement, or INSPIRE Award, and in 2015 when she was named a top 20 pioneer of family medicine research by the Canadian College of Family Physicians. Um, so, uh, well, this concludes um, her, her work biography, and actually it's probably not even up to date. I think there's a few other things on here that are a little bit more current. Um, I also uh, want to say um, that Janet um, it has um, what I think are you know rare, rare qualities or important qualities um, as a family member and, and as a sister. So it's it's hard to imagine when I read this um, how uh, how much she makes herself available uh, to her family and to her community um, and the things that she does to kind of go out of way, out of her way to support people. And, and personally, she's always there for me, um, no matter what she's doing or how busy she is. I know that she'll, she'll get in touch whenever I reach out. And, um, so uh, just other, you know, really important qualities, I think, too, um, to acknowledge. So thank you. Yeah. she got a hold of that bio. <laughs> one of the interesting tensions in my life um, is how one needs to write about oneself in academic environments and then this um, teaching this natural law around humility. Um, so and the understanding that there's nothing that one does individually, right? So um, it's always a collective work, but thank you very much. I want to um, just acknowledge and thank um, the organizing committee, 
i feel extremely humbled and honored i do want to also acknowledge the kevin the president of the student council and joseph the principal and it's i want to say mr ellison um for um like uh supporting this um and uh i want to um acknowledge um my fellow inductees because it's a real honor and um it's interesting um because of course um everybody's quite unique and we have different roles that we play in this world but um i grew up in king city reading all about the local history and it's interesting because it, as i'm sure you know it's an old trade route as well though i think our um metis kin lines um yeah kind of did more the road between um edmonton and saskatoon and red river and stuff like that um and then uh, hands it's a real honor and privilege to be here as well and here you are writing about louis real as well so um I just wanted to say a couple words um, about belonging. Um, I had the opportunity to see my um, youngest children, Jay and Quinn, start middle school. Um, and of course, it's always a bit nerve wracking to go to a new school. And one of their teachers, who was a really gifted teacher in their elementary school, said to them, well, you should know that everybody's going to be a little bit worried about going to the new school. So even the kids that seem really confident and popular, they're going to be um, a little bit scared underneath all that, so don't worry. Um, and uh, I also um, encourage them to kind of reach out if there was other children um, who were kind of isolated. So I guess um, the message that I want to kind of briefly share is that it's really important to look at what we can do to support belonging um, and to support everybody um, to be able to be themselves as much as they can be. Um, and I feel that there are some things about me um, that could have made me not feel like I necessarily belonged when I came to KCSS. And um, one of the things is actually my mother had been tragically ill and she passed away within my first couple months of grade nine. Um, another thing is, of course, we were a Métis family growing up um, in King City. Um, so most people actually thought my mother was maybe Greek. We knew we were part Indian or, or Métis, um, but it wasn't something that really um, we were having long conversations with or that, um, you know, others had a context for. And then, of course, through high school, I started um, understanding and um, trying to, like all high school students, it's really important to kind of um, develop, like, uh, my sexuality and I started trying to make sense of um, some of the ideas that were entering into my um, mindscape around being attracted to women and I didn't actually really even have a frame for that. Um, but the thing is I had many gifts and bundles that actually did support me and provide me with the tools to kind of make sense of my world. So even though it wasn't until university that I was able like, you know, to find places for indigenous students or you know, start connecting and come out um, and step into um, myself with respect to being gay um, and kind of deal with like some of the kind of complex depression um, and unresolved grief that I had around the loss of my mom. I had many, many gifts, right? Like the other inductees. So, and of course they start in our family. Um, so I had um, a dad who was a world-class scientist already and he taught me the love of science and he taught me from a very early age um, that I was good at math and science and I was confident. And I think that's an unusual gift um, for a young Métis girl to have been getting like in the um, late 60s and early 70s. I had a mom, a Métis mom and grandmother, I think who had already done the heavy lifting. So my mom had um, trained as a nurse and she taught me to speak out at injustice and she taught me a lot of other things. I had a sister who was three years older than me who actually took up the responsibility for running the home um, after my mother died. Um, and she taught me about the importance, and clearly you can see about non-judgment and um, support. She's the actual one that actually encouraged me to go into medicine too, because I came home one summer and I was excited about aspirin because I'd learned some of the biochemistry of aspirin. And she said, well, did you think about medicine? Um, I have a brother who's here who's loyal and steadfast in his relationships. Um, we have many dynamic women in our family, including now my stepmother and my younger stepsister. I call us the four lionesses. Um, so here's a guy that knows how to be present and steadfast and make, um, help us make our way through. 
Um, my stepmother um, married my father when I was in um, grade 11, um, and she taught me um, about going out of my comfort zone in sport and world travel. Um, and I've had the opportunity actually to reconnect over the years and actually just a couple weeks ago with um, many of my peers at KCSS and they taught me about kindness and caring. Um, and they took care of me because um, even though I was excelling in my studies, there was still one or two other things I hadn't sorted out. So um, yeah, they took care of me um, and didn't take advantage of some of my vulnerabilities. Um, so that was a real gift. Um, and last but certainly not least were the teachers Right? This, I got an excellent public school education. I was challenged in my public school education. I had the academic support and growth and tools um, to um, the building blocks that helped me excel as a scientist, um, but also supports for extracurricular things. So I became a cross-country runner. I was in band. Um, and it's not only the teachers, it's also the staff. So there was actually a janitor um, Dennis, who actually supported a women's running group, um, and that was really important to me. Um, I wanted to be on the basketball team too, but I wasn't very coordinated and I'd skipped a grade. So it's actually also not only just the um, gym teachers, it's the other teachers that do that extra stuff that helps. So of course I realized that, well, I'm kind of determined and bullheaded and not that coordinated, but if I just run and run and run, I can be an okay distance runner. Um, I wanted to tell a little story. So another inductee, Dr. Rob Sargent, actually works at St. Michael's Hospital with me. Um, and it's interesting because as I mentioned, I had these gifts and bundles that helped support me through um, my high school. But then later on, there's other pieces of the puzzle that we kind of pick up. So Rob and I met each other. Um, and here's Rob, he's like an accomplished triathlete. So Rob and I used to compete in the science fair and we competed for the top mark in biology and I wasn't the top student. Andrew McDougall um, was a little bit ahead of me. Um, but uh, anyways, Rob, um, now he wasn't known as a sporty person, but he had that potential and he's like uh, an accomplished triathlete now. And I know that was important with his inductive, um, induction because um, Karen Highland, one of our mutual peers, spoke to that and has helped train him. Um, and then here I was, this outspoken advocate for Indigenous health, and I'm, I'm not sure that Rob actually knew um, that I was Indigenous, so um, we pick up these pieces. But what was neat is um, I was trying to engage Rob and his team of internal medicine doctors in this study of um, Indigenous um, cultural safety training I mean, at first, I don't know how keen he was, but then I shared the method, and he thought the method was really clever, and because we worked on science together, we could have that dialogue. Um, so just a couple more words, and then we'll get me off here, because um, the hook might come, um, but you've been very patient. But I guess today, I see with my kids um, that there are many more resources to support students who might feel a little bit different. Um, so my um, sons have access to a rainbow club in their school for um, kids who are um, gay um, and uh, gender diverse and their allies. Um, there is like a good program that Indigenous students can access. I think um, in the I think my um, niece has accessed in, uh, for Indigenous students. Um, I think that there probably is more awareness about how um, students might be going through um, like. Uh, mental health issues, um, but I still think that there's many students who are struggling out there and looking for belonging, right? Um, so I guess um, that's partly why I was so honored and it's partly why maybe I'm taking a little bit more than three minutes in this talk just to say um, that um, we can do a lot and I had many gifts and bundles along the way that actually helped me um, get through this sense of belonging and not belonging. And actually now I use it in my day-to-day -day job, right? So I work at a big hospital in downtown Toronto, St. Michael's Hospital, right? Um, and many First Nations, Inuit and Métis um, people don't feel like they belong when they're in the hospital yet, right? Um, but I can use um, those experiences of not belonging um, to help um, build bridges. So thanks very much. I'm incredibly honored and humbled. Um, and I hope we enjoy the rest of the morning.